Hello everyone. Today is our lecture number four. And today I will be discussing with all of you why biasing is important in analog circuits. Well, first of all, I want to share with you that suppose this is our VGT and basically let this is our box and this is our amplifier box on here there is a vgt and one is our load here i have two port one is input port and another is our output port let's say we want to connect one mic in our input port and we want to around 200 millivolt in our output let uh, our mic input voltage sorry our mic output voltage is 20 millivolt which is input for vgt and we want to 20 millivolt as output so how should we design this circuit mean uh, our goal is to design this box higher one vgt and one load resistance is present. Okay, let's see. Suppose this is our mic input voltage, which is 20 millivolt, and this 20 millivolt will come in our BGT base, and our desired output is minus 200 millivolt. So first of all, uh, if we apply KCL, in this particular node, then we may find our IC current from using Ohm's law basically. And our IC current is B out divided by RL, and these equations also satisfied our KCL. And the previous lecture, I told with you that our collect current equation and this is our collector current equation and we can manipulate to this two equation and if we will manipulate this two equation then we can establish one relationship between our output voltage and our input 20 millivolt input voltage and we can find that uh, this is our combined this if we combine these two equation this is our final equation however in this equation we know v out uh, we should find out um, the value of rl this is our design portion and is and vt this two are constant the typical value of is is 5 into 10 to the power minus 16 on the other hand, VT, which is temperature dependent, and at room temperature, our typical value of VT is approximately 26 millivolt. So here, we should find RL. And if we just input those values in this equation, we can easily find out the value of RL. And we find that our RL should be three point approximately 3.5 ohm into 10 to the power minus sorry 3.5 into 10 to the minus 14 ohm this means um this rl should be 3.5 into 10 to, the power, 10 to the power minus 14 ohm is it desirable you know nowadays our vlsa technology demands our circuit we are designing circuit in 10 nanometer and 14 nanometer and they're really very thin or very little small so in a small circuit i should i should build a huge resistance this is really undesirable so what should we do well uh, i want to say with that on average, the typical value of resistance in VLSA circuit is around 5 kilo to 10 kilo. 
it is our basically there is no role but we always try to make a resistance which size is as much as smaller so our target is to reduce the size of rl so let's see how we can do this okay mm, this is our final target that this is our input 20 millivolt and our output should be large and this swing we will deserve almost 200 millivolt. Uh, this RL is not acceptable. Mm, the typical value are approximately less than 10 kilo. So what should we do? Well, we can explain this phenomena mm, using this curve. This curve I already explained in my previous lecture. And here we, I showed you that this curve is really an exponential curve. And let's see what the meaning of this curve. Well, this VE, which is our input. And if this input is 10 millivolt, let's say if this input is 10 millivolt, uh, which I said 20 millivolt, let's say this input is 10 millivolt for mic, then um, the current of IC we can calculate using this expression because we know VT, we know IS, so we can easily calculate the value of IC. IC is very, very a small amount of current. However, due to, but let's see, uh, if, what is our Ohm's law? Our Ohm's law said that, uh, if our output voltage is fixed, then we can play with R and I. Well, uh, the relationship said us that um, if we can increase the value of I, then we can reduce the value of R. Is that it? So, because our target is, I want to reduce the size of R, then I should increase the value of current. So how it possible? Uh, this can possible if we increase our VVE, if we increase our input voltage, at that time we can find uh, a large value of I. Consequently, the value of R should be reduced. Well, uh, let's see. Uh, if we let let our VVE, our input voltage is 800 millivolt. When our VVE is 800 millivolt, using this formula, we can easily calculate our value of IC, which is 16.94 milliampere. Well, is there any wrong? Sorry, this not 16.94 is 11.53 milliampere. Uh, it's mean I want to say that if I add a DC voltage uh, with this mic and when mic signal or mic output is zero, still this DC voltage is present there. And due to this DC voltage, uh, whenever um, there is no signal at that time, our IC is 11 point uh, something milliampere. Is it clear for a B1? I want to say if I add a DC voltage with this mic, at that time, if my output voltage is zero, at that time still one DC voltage 800 millivolt is present in our base terminal. And as a result, uh, IC will be flow through this BGT due to this DC voltage and the value of this IC is 11.53 milliampere. Uh, and now 
we can say that due to this DC voltage, uh, we will find one particular current. Actually, this is our biasing point, or sometimes we will also call it our Q point. Okay, uh, whenever I will discuss about MOSFET, I discuss this topic elaborately, what is Q point, but now this is our biasing point. And now in this case, when suppose an input signal of 10 milliampere will come and that our total VV will be 810 millivolt with signal. When a 10 millivolt signal come there, then our total VV will be 810 millivolt. Then our IC corresponding IC is 16.94 milliampere. Now, uh, we also said that uh, whenever there is no signal, our current is that, and when a 10 millivolt signal come there, at that time, our current exponentially rise. And now, if we want to design a circuit that whenever a change in current around 5.5, .5 Four one milliampere, which is the difference between these two current. Excuse me. At that time, our output signal should be two hundred millivolt. So we can easily find this value. Uh, whenever um, our IC change of IC is five point four one millivolt, we will find a signal of two hundred millivolt. At that time, our RL should be four forty ohm is desirable. So I think that uh, you already know the importance of our DC biasing. Because without biasing, our IC is very small. And that's why uh, we are demand a huge value of RL, but actually it's not um, usable. That's why we should increase the value of current and if we can increase the value of current, then we can reduce our resistance value. So we must add a DC biasing. This is basically the beauty of biasing. And that's why uh, our circuit size will be shrink. In addition, there is another important topic and that is, uh, which is related to our transconductance GM. Uh, if we try to calculate our transconductance for this particular circuit, then we can find uh, this. Uh, there here is our transconductance is 0.541 Siemens. And if you notice my previous lecture, here also I explained about this formula. So you can got it easily. And we also established one relationship between IC and GM, and we claim that uh, the relation between IC and GM is linear, almost linear. So my final summation is if there is no IC initially, or mean if there, we, we don't bias our circuit appropriately, so there is no initial IC. And if there is no IC, so there is no GM. So it is the beauty of our initial or importance of our DC biasing. So we should bias our circuit and whenever we bias, there should be some current and due to this current, obviously there is some GM already present and due to this GM, we'll find our desired output signal. So uh, hopefully this is our last lecture on BGT. The next day uh, I will start from MOSFET and here I must elaborate a B portion elaborately. For example, the structure of MOSFET or the small signal model or how should calculate gain from small signal model as well as other amplifier circuit. Basically we will discuss our main amplifier portion 
from our MOSFET because nowadays MOSFET is really very popular. And whenever I will start my lecture, I will also share with you why we moved to MOSFET. So thank you for support me. And I think that this video is really helpful for you everyone. And I hopefully that now you can easily understand what is the importance of this biasing. Thank you everyone. If my video is helpful, please like, comment and share.